JC Direct this week, China to the rescue with massive stimulus. We've got the Tsar massively stronger. South Africa is the best EM in the last six months. Rate cuts, yep, they're starting. Anglo Platinum out of the top 40. This is JC Direct number 604 for 26 September, recorded same date, 8.30 a.m. My name is Simon Brown. This podcast is brought to you by Just One Lap. Let's start off with the RAND, which is really having, and not a surprise, right? I think everyone kind of thought this was going to happen. I don't think we are surprised by the fact that we're seeing some RAND strength, and it is Strong. I mean, make no bones about it. I think uh, 1713, 1712 was the low that we saw on Wednesday. As I'm recording this, trading at 1721. That's a long way from what, uh, J- June of last year when we were at 1965. It's also, and let's zoom this chart out a little bit, it's a long way from the June of 2021 when we were at 1341 and some change. That, of course, was a massive commodity bull run, and that really what helped the rand in that regard. What's helping in the rand now is some dollar weakness. We'll look at the DXY in a second. So certainly we're seeing some dollar weakness, but we're also seeing foreigners buying our bonds. Next, be clear. They're not massively buying our equities yet. It's still really a bond story. And if we go, let's look at targets first. Uh, targets here. 1680 is absolutely the first target that's sitting at around that level there, which is low from Jan of last year. Uh, and thereafter, where do we go? I mean, I don't know. I mean, certainly, I mean, 1450 is is not impossible, but it's going to take a little bit longer. The 1680, I think we'll see fairly quickly. DXY, which is the uh, dollar index, has been weakish. And then we can see it's kind of trading around about that support of about 101 on on the index. Uh, Certainly the resistance at 106 has held very firm. And this is helping us. And what's the story here? Well, we're seeing rates come down. So you could get, I don't know, 4 or 5% on a US 10-year. Now you're getting 3.5%. So people are saying, well, then that's not so great. Let's go and buy South African bonds as an example. So money's leaving the US and finding itself other homes. It's good news for us. We will absolutely take it. It is likely to continue there are as always risks however i mean this is not a you know a, a one way bet and at some point the rand will weaken again it absolutely will the trick is is what happens the rand goes to 1950 and change everyone panics ships money offshore now it's at uh, 1720 and everyone's like oh hang on is there a better rate coming use rand strength to externalize rands and take them into dollars euro sterling whatever the case may be i have a a, a process where I take on a regular basis, regardless of the rate. I think my worst is north of 19. Maybe it was 19. I can't remember exactly. And then at times like this, I just simply try and take more. That's always been my process. But let's just have a, a quick look at uh, emerging markets just more generally. This was posted by Corin Richards on Twitter. This is only a six-month view. But we are well outperforming uh, emerging markets generally. This is in dollars, uh, and Brazil and Mexico of the same period, both negative. All three countries had elections in the last six months, and ours is, I think Brazil was maybe election was a little earlier, a little earlier in the year. But certainly what we're seeing is that the, our, our, our market in dollars is doing really, really well. And I don't expect, again, that to stop anytime soon. Someone did ask me, yesterday evening you know when does this bull run end so there's there's two ways it ends because let's be clear this is a bull run right top 40 or share index both at all-time highs when and how does it end it ends on our own shooting ourselves in the feet and that is more around the government of national unity uh sort of disintegrating certainly there are risks in terms of state-owned enterprises those haven't gone away and let's remember we are still gray listed and we are still sub investment grade we are junk status gray listing should go mid next year maybe closer to september october by all accounts a sub investment grade we need to start seeing some upgrades happening there even just to positive outlooks and then finally we we're we're quite deep in the sub investment grade it's going to take some time to get out of that the other risk to it 
is a global economy that then just collapses. And that is absolutely possible. Make no mistake, you know, worries around U.S. recession, worries around who wins the U.S. presidential election in, what's that now, about five weeks away or so. So there's definitely risks out there. Make no mistake about that. But then let's bring China to the story. So China came along and said, hey, guys, we uh, think that uh, we need to stimulate our economy. They announced it Tuesday morning. We were closed for public holiday. And it, in essence, is doing two things. The one is reducing the reserve requirements for banks. So a bank has, for example, $1 and it can lend $10. Now they're saying, you know what, if you've got $1, you can lend $20. $20. So, and I, I appreciate what the risks are there, make no mistake about that. But what they're trying to do is to stimulate consumer demand via debt. The other thing they're doing is reducing some of their key interest rate metrics. They've got a bunch of them. The thing is, is that this is probably, I think since the 2008 crisis, about the single biggest stimulus that we have seen from China. We've also seen China move away from clamping down on the various different tech companies in different sectors. Uh, most notably, there was a, a report, or not a report, it was published on, on, on one of the Chinese uh, uh, websites, uh, government websites, uh, more restrictions around gaming and the like, and it was late December and markets had an absolute froth about it. And very quietly, it was just deleted from the website by report. The, the official who, who, who posted it is no longer an official in the Chinese government. Um, and so we've kind of got away from that common prosperity from uh, Xi Jinping where he was cracking down to almost a sense of, you know what, we've kind of achieved that common prosperity, so everything's good. We don't have to worry about that. But what we're now seeing is that I mean, the, the China, and let's go look at some, some uh, uh, China ETFs, uh, and we've got the, there's a Satrix one, there is also a Signia one, I'm going to look at the Satrix one because to be honest, I can't remember the Signia code, uh, and there it is, and certainly having a good period of it. There's still... I mean, make no mistakes about it. There are still uh, issues out there. It's still a ways to go. Uh, if we zoom this out to all the data, if you'd bought it in the IPO, you are still underwater. But both the Hang Seng is looking good, and we're also seeing the uh, Chinese index looking good as well. Commodities also rallied a bit. The theory here is, so China's targeting 5% GDP. It's, it's, it's a big ask, but they kind of do it, and we can debate how good the numbers are. But let's park that debate aside. This will help them. This will help the uh, uh, property market in some degree because, of course, now there will be more debt out there, more folks can go and buy. And hopefully it will also, Chinese government says hopefully, it will also help the equity market. Uh, Chinese citizens are woefully underinvested in the equity market because they were putting all their money into property and because we've seen a three and a half year bear market in Chinese equities, down about 50%. So it's been really, really horror in that regard. Notwithstanding, we've had a fairly significant bounce, which started uh, earlier in the year, truthfully, but has absolutely followed through. So better for the consumer. They've also been buying gold, so we might see some uh, upside to gold. Down the line, if this really gets the economy, Chinese economy working strongly, next on the list is commodities, which is why Tuesday, while we were closed in New York, the ADRs did incredibly well, and then Wednesday was a commodity day across our market. If this works, and if the Chinese economy starts booming, and then they start picking up on, on commodities, and those start booming. And, and this is less about PGMs, although it's PGMs to a degree. It's coal, it's iron ore, it's manganese, it, it, it's zinc, it's copper. Uh, it's all of those sort of more industrial type uh, metals and, and commodities. That starts to happen, Iran gets stronger. And at that point, remember I mentioned a moment ago how in, in, in 2021 Iran was so immensely strong. That was the commodity bull market because the miners in South Africa are mining their commodity and they're receiving money in dollars and then they change it back into czar. So they are buying czar so it makes czar go a lot stronger. If this really works for China, and this is going to play out slowly over a year or three, if it really, really works, I mean, who knows where the RAND goes? We had the RAND at 1361 in December 2021, and it went to 575 by 2006. And what was that? That was all about massive commodity bull market, which also 
propelled our JSC to insane levels, but it was those commodities helping our RAND stronger. So in which case, I mean, where does the RAND go? I don't know. I mean, just on that metric, it could uh, easily more than halve from its highs, which takes us to nine and change. I don't see that. I think 1450 is a big number, then maybe into the 12s. For now, let's focus on that 1680. Seems to, in my mind, be the number that perhaps is, is, is certainly more realistic at this point in time. Things will change, and as it does, we will keep an eye on it. Of course we will. Three events planned, uh, two with uh, ETFSA, uh, Joburg next Thursday, 3rd of October, 6 o'clock at the JSC, either live at the JSC or we've got the webcast, and then 8 October is in Durban. Both of those you can find starting at 6 o'clock. And then we've got a power hour with Professor Adrian Seville on 17 October. That will be 5.30 either at uh, Standard Bank head office in Rosebank or via webcast. Uh, I will be at the Joburg ETFSA event next week. So if you're around, come and say hi. And then, of course, I'll be at the Power Hour as well. Just one lap.com slash events for more information and booking. So we got our rate cuts, and I appreciate I'm a little behind the curve on these, but I recorded last week, Wednesday, ahead of it. We got 50 points from the Fed, 25 points from the the, the Reserve Bank locally. Uh, the Fed was maybe the surprise. The consensus was edging towards a 25-point cut, but they gave us 50, and we only got 25, and everyone, myself included, would have liked a 50-point cut. The key point is this, the, 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 the quantum of the cuts is important, but not. What it means is we have started our rate-cutting cycle. That is is critically important and not just us we've got the 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 ecb we have you know central bank is the world over i think uh, canada was perhaps the first to get in on it we have started the rate cutting cycle and that is good news it's good news for stocks with lots of debt uh, businesses with debt it's good news for property stocks because now you can't get yield in the government bonds and, and corporate bonds so you go and buy property stocks they are the best performing sector so far year to date on the jsc which you know, okay, off a very low base, I accept that, but still a, a, a massive uh, uh, surge that we have seen from them so far this year. And I think the valuations aren't stretched. They're probably, I think, reasonable. Uh, we need to see underlying performance improve. That, of course, also is going to be helped by offers coming back to the party, but retail's doing okay. Logistics uh, doing great, as has been doing for some time. We've now got the rate cuts coming through. Uh, the Saab was a little cautious. Their projection for inflation next year, they see the dip down in October. I've spoken around that. Many, not many, some are saying 3.5% inflation for October. What we are seeing is, although slightly lower, Saab is expecting CPI next year to average only a little below the 4.5% target number. Hence, they being cautious. There are some saying we might get a 50-point cut in November. Certainly, a November cut is expected. Is it 50? Is it 25? Again, we will find out then. And then, of course, we're back to January, and every two months we'll have the meetings. I don't think... So we now got Prime, 11 and a half. I don't think it's going to go... You know, maybe, maybe it gets to 10 and a half. I don't think we're going to see sub 10 in a hurry. I don't think we're going to see massively low rates necessarily in the U.S. either. The U.S. economy is looking fine. Our local economy is doing okay. I've made the case on this very podcast that we could do 3% GDP in South Africa next year. Uh, that's without have any massive rate cuts. But we're here. It's finally happened. It's been a long, long wait for it. And finally, we are where we need to be. Big news, perhaps end of last week, we had an index uh, rejuggling, and what that means is that uh, some stocks go out of the index, some stocks go in. The only index that really had any changes, but the only of the three of, of the main ones, so top forty, Indy, Resi, and Finney, the only one with uh, any significant change was the top forty, and that saw uh, Pepco coming in and Anglo Platinum coming out. Now. Anglo Platinum, here is the chart. I did a, 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 a podcast on it a few weeks ago. And what I spoke about then, and I stick to it today, if you are bullish PGMs, I don't like Anglo Platinum. Look, it's bounced off a 500 low. It's up, what's that, 20 or 20, 25% almost. 
The reason I don't like it is that massive 73% that Anglo-American still owns and needs to sell uh, one way or the other. And I know they'll do book builds, they'll do unbundlings and dual listings and all of that, but it's a massive overhang. But it is telling that Anglo-Platinum is out of the top 40. I try to find out if it had ever been out before, and I couldn't find data. I suspect it probably has. I don't think this was the first time it's been kicked out. But perhaps the biggest story is Pepco coming into the top 40. And why is that important? Well, firstly, it's a retailer rather than a miner. And of course, South Africa at its at our heart is a mining economy, although we haven't been for many, I mean, since the 70s, you know, 50 odd years, really. Pepco, we look at the various different retailers. They've all run, Pepco's run too, but it's probably the cheapest of the retailers. And that is an important st uh, statement that, you know, in, in terms of just a good old fashioned price earnings, we've got Mr. Price at the top, we've got Fashini Truers, and then we've got Pepco at the bottom. They, of course, are Pepco. We know the brands locally, Pep, Ackerman, and the like. What we've also got is their flash business, which is selling uh, uh, airtime and, and, and cell phones and uh, uh, electricity digitally uh, that is a huge business and they're doing okay in brazil it was a big deal for them and that seems to be working i always liked pepco uh, and then i kind of by the time it came to you know, potentially buying it i couldn't find great charts in it or anything a, a nice breakouts so i've got mr price and i've got the fashini group instead as my two in this particular space anyway pep now part of the top 40 index uh, replacing anglo platinum these updates happen every quarter there will be another one in december December. These aren't new or weird, uh, and it is just basically on the size of the business. But the free float, and of course, Anglo Platinum might creep back in as that free float increases as Anglo American gets rid of what they have in terms of, of just the, 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 the size of the stake that they are holding in that regard. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. Yep, that will be true. As always, not financial advice, just some thoughts and views. We're going to park it there for today. Remember the events, uh, come along if you're in Johannesburg um, or Durban. If you're down in Durban, we have got the Durban one. For Cape Town folks who are saying, what about us? Uh, Cape Town's already happened. It was a couple of weeks back, and we did mention it on this here show. So if you went, I hope you had fun. Anyway, my name is Simon. We'll leave it for this week. As always, we'll chat again next week. And look after yourself, and if you can... Look after somebody else as well. Cheers all.